Thank you for tuning in to RadicCards.com. I'm your host, Patrick Greeno, and today I'm hosting uh, Brian Hayes of LinguaSportsCards.com. He and I are going to be talking about uh, individual cards. He's going to be talking about a card, and then I'm going to follow up with a conversation about a card I'm bringing to the table. So um, I'm going to let Brian sort of take it away here first. Brian, go ahead and start. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Patrick. Uh, so today I have a 93 Bowman Mariano Rivera. So sort of back to basics here with just a, a base card. Um, but I like this card for, for a couple of reasons. One is, um, so this is a second year card and, um, you know, I, I tend to pursue second year cards, uh, quite a bit. Uh, Rivera, you know, pretty famously, he's got a 92 Bowman rookie card. This is the 93 Bowman. Um, second year cards, I, you know, once again, I feel like they're, they can be undervalued, um, especially when there is a very popular rookie card and his 93 or 92 Bowman qualifies as that. Um, but quite honestly, I've never really been a big fan of 92 Bowman. Um, the the players that are featured just in their street clothes, um, there's quite a few of the rookies and prospects in 92 Bowman featured like that. Um, to me, those kind of cards, they just feel a little too too generic um, in, in my mind. So um, I've never, for that reason, I've never been a huge fan of 92 Bowman, Mariano Rivera, but I still wanted one of his earlier cards. And uh, this 93 Bowman, obviously, it's got Rivera in a great, a great uh, portrait shot there in his Yankee pinstripes. Um, so I just feel like, uh, in, in some ways, this, this card is just a little bit more complete. This is the first Bowman card of Rivera in his Yankees uniform, and I just think that's cool. Um, and then once again, it just generally speaking, I like second-year cards because uh, they can be overlooked, um, you know, with so much focus, you know, deservedly so on rookie cards. Um, second year cards, a, a lot of times you can get some pretty good values on, on such, such cards. I like the design of 93 Bowman. I think it's just, it's a very clean design. Um, you know, once again, just sort of back to the basics. 93 was a period where a lot of car companies, you know, started experimenting. You, you started to get more like foil on cards and stuff like that, refractor technology. Those sort of things started to to just to, to show up on cards, but that's you don't see that on 93 Bowman, and I just sort of appreciate that that um, you know sometimes just just going back to basics one, once in, once in a while is is kind of nice. And uh, Rivera, obviously, he was a great player for for many years. He was one of those Yankees, you know, a lot of. Uh, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, baseball fans, um, you know, there's a good portion of baseball fans that don't really like Yankees or certain Yankee players, but Rivera seemed to be one of those guys that was more or less universe, universally, um, you know, loved by the by the viewing public, and I was always a big fan. So, uh, once again, I've got a, a card here of a player that I really like, and I think it's a card that's a little bit undervalued or, um, you know, just, um, you know, generally speaking, you know the the 92 Bowman receives much more attention, and so I, I kind of like to bring cards cards like that. You know, give them their moment in the sun, and bring them out every once in a while. So for those reasons, I think this is a a great card, a great addition to my collection. Nice man, I'm glad you brought this to the table. This is you know the uh, next best thing from his 92 Bowman rookie card. Um, instead of him appearing like he just came out of church, sitting standing next to a like a like a building. He's actually dressed for, for play, which I like that. I also like the, the font and almost like Saved by the Bell sort of look to 93 Bowman. The, um, the color overlay over the last name with that font just kind of like pops out of the card like that. Yeah. Very much a staple of that early 90s era. Um, I, I, in a way, reminisce of my childhood looking at stuff like this. I never bought any packs of 93 Bowman. You know, I didn't really buy any packs of 92 Bowman. I actually bought some packs of 91 and 90 back in the day, even maybe 89. But um, in 93, I, I think that, you know, it was it was considered a premium product in 93. And um, I, I was on a budget, so um, I think I had my $2 a week allowance. And I was able to put money toward whatever I could buy with my $2 a week. And it certainly wasn't 93 Bowman. Um, so I missed out on this, this particular run. But... 93 Bowman has, has got a lot of classic rookie cards. Jeter is in the, the 93 Bowman set as well. Um, yeah. A lot of uh, a lot of guys. I mean, Bowman's just another it's another great Bowman release with a lot of rookie cards, right? And Mariano Rivera really didn't shine into his own until 
way past his rookie years, you know? I mean, it was well into the 90s when he was finally starting to come up as, like, a reputable closer. And his cards were going from 50 cents to, you know, a couple dollars. It was starting to pick up that way. And now he's known as one of the game's greatest closers of all time. And so Marion of Rivera, um, you know, it's, it's, it, it's kind of like... Kurt Schilling was one of those guys, too, that it took some years for him to pick up and be known uh, for his craft as a pitcher. And it wasn't really until he reached the Red Sox to do that. Um, you know, Mariana, it took uh, five or six years before people started to catch on. That, oh, my gosh, this guy's actually really good. Um, and so the guys that picked up onto Mariano Rivera in 92 93 probably were able to get his rookie cards for very cheap, under a dollar. You know, and so now they're... You know, the, the Mariano Rivera is one of the greatest cards in the 92 Bowman set, and certainly a desirable card in his follow-up 93 Bowman uh, release. So uh, definitely you know, a great... Well, go ahead. Yeah, no, I was going to say, you know, it's interesting that you mentioned how um, back in the 90s, how maybe you had collected more, like maybe 89, 90, 91 Bowman, didn't have a chance to get 92 or 93. I, I was the exact same way back in the day. So because of that... Um, you know, and then I was sort of collecting. There, there became so many different card sets in the '90s, um, and then you know, for a little while, I was out of the hobby. Because of that, I never actually saw this card. I wasn't familiar with this card until about six six months ago, and so I think that's one of the things that ap appeals was appealing to me about this card. That is, like the '92 Bowman. It's classic. It's it's very well known. Like it, you can recognize it. You know, many collectors just can recognize the '92 Bowman Marion Rivera in a heartbeat. Um, but I, I found this card, you know, once again, just, just a few months ago, and I wanted, I wanted to get it added to my collection. I think the newness, it's an old card, but it's new to me. And I think that's very appealing. I like that process of going back sometimes and finding cards that can still feel very fresh. Because so often, so many of the classic cards, they're great, but you're very, very familiar with them. It's rare to find, like, a great card, you know, or, you know, what at least I feel it's a great card, that still feels new and fresh. And I think that just the seeing him, a young Mariano Rivera, in the Yankee pinstripes was new. Like, on, on a, a 93 Bowman card, it's just new to me. I just, for whatever reason, I wasn't familiar with, with the card. And so that that was another reason that this card was uh, appealing to me. And you were mentioning some other players. I, I bet you, like, you know, some players do take longer to develop. And because of that, you know, some of their you know, non rookie year cards, they can get it's easy to get lost in the shuffle because there's just so many different sets out there, so many different cards out there. It's kind of fun to go back and say, Hey, what what were cards being produced of a, a certain player, you know, at a given time? It's easy to um overlook some of those non rookie cards that are still really awesome. Yeah, truly. I mean I even look back and like, you know, eighty eight tops traded with the the Jim Abbott and the Tino Martinez and Robin Ventura and then you, you go into eighty nine and ninety and those are their, like, rookie year cards. And yeah. They're significant in their own way, but they're not technically rookie cards because the 88 card had already been produced, but yet the 88 features them in their USA outfit, so they're not even really rookies yet. So yeah. I like to look back on those and just kind of think of, like, the 88, 89, 90 as, like, the rookie year stuff for Robbie Ventura, Tino Martinez. <laughs> and, you know, you can argue that, Jim Abbott was in there, but of course he was already showed. He was already shown in, in his Angels uniform in '89, so he really, really, well, I wouldn't put him in the '90 category. But that aside, the rookie era stuff for some of these players, there's a lot available. You know, if you're collecting like a guy like A Rod, you got all the '94 stuff, and then you can kind of play with the '95 stuff, although it's not rookie year stuff. It's just rookie theme stuff. Chipper Jones has got rookie theme stuff from '91 to '96. It's crazy. And yeah. you've got, you know, um, Mariano Rivera, you know, you've got 92, 93. Of course, 92 is going to be the rookie year stuff, and then 93 is going to be like, well, now he's a, he's a veteran of some capacity. But whatever the case, you can kind of play with those things and have a little bit more lenience with how you collect quote-unquote rookie cards because um, the spectrum is a bit wide and the definitions aren't as clear as they should be. Um, this is especially the case with the USA stuff, right? Because these players aren't yet professionals. They're just showcasing. They're being featured on cardboard that's licensed by both MLB and MLBPA. 
So that actually designates that as, as, as a rookie card, but they're not entering their first rookie year until maybe years later. I've discussed this in, you know, at length in, in previous blog entries, but um, whatever the case, you have a lot to choose from if you're lenient with, uh, with how you uh, interact with, with those definitions. It's like, I want a good representation of a guy's rookie era stuff. It may be the year after he first appeared on cardboard, right? Maybe it's yeah. just a better shot of the player, but it's the follow-up year. You know, there's some great stuff from 92 that's Chipper Jones, not rookie cards, but they're, you know, great shots that say rookie card on them. Um, a perfect example is, uh, well, 93 Don Russ is a great, great shot. He's also in a 92 Stadium Club card that's, that's classic. These aren't rookie cards, but they're still great shots of him in the uh, Atlanta Braves uniform. In this capacity, we're talking about Mariano Rivera, not a rookie card, but a great portrait of a young Mariano um, coming into the scene, essentially. And I can appreciate that. You know, the cards can be appreciated in a variety of ways. Um, they don't have to be rookie cards to be appreciated. You know, they can just be great portrait shots, uh, high-grade cards you just like the design. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm a proponent of that in a variety of different ways. There are certain things I grab for, at the right price point if I just like the card. Um, but, you know, there has to be kind of some rules, some parameters there. Otherwise, my collection will just look like a hodgepodge of nonsense. And so you have to kind of be careful about how you interact with those sorts of opportunities. In this capacity, I think the 93 Bowman is a perfect, perfect addition to anybody's collection, especially high grade. Um, and I think when this card came out, it was still very affordable. Nowadays, it's, you know, because he's who he is now, how he's known, uh, this particular card may hold a, a much higher premium than it once did back in 1993. Yeah, that's, um, I totally agree, Patrick. Like, I, I couldn't have said it better, actually. I think uh, we're in alignment here on sort of, you know, picking up rookie cards, rookie era cards, and, you know, just once again, as you've alluded to, different collectors have different definitions as what's a rookie and what's not. But when we're just talking from a general point of view, you know, rookie era cards, um, there's just a... It's just always great, I, I feel, to see players in their relative youth when they're still, you know, you don't know when the, when the card was made. I just like thinking about when that card was made. No one, nobody knew what Rivera was going to come, be, become, what his career was going to become. And I just really like to, to, to think back on, on, on those times. So just, uh, yeah, just re really happy with this card uh, all, all the way around. Good, man. I'm glad you uh, brought that by. Thanks for sharing. That's a, certainly a good example. I'm going to change it up a bit, but we're still going to be talking about this Yankees theme. So Mariano Rivera spent his career with the Yankees. He's one of those long-term, whole career, same team guys. Uh, that rarely happens. Chipper Jones is one of those guys. Tony Gwynn, Cal Ripken, uh, they exist. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's just a rare instance. Derek Jeter is another one of those guys. Spent his whole career with the same team. So we're going to keep that same Yankees theme. Today I'm going to talk about the 1999 Bowman's Best Atomic Refractor Nick Johnson rookie card in a PSA 10. Now, I acquired this because I knew that in 99 he was an up-and-coming prospect. Um, I was out of the hobby in 99, so I actually picked up on Nick Johnson's popularity um, and, you know, years later when I got back into the hobby, and then I started to kind of see what was out there, feel out, you know, what, which cards were, were interesting to get. There's a lot in 99, a lot of opportunities for different stuff from 99, and so I just wanted one good representation of the Johnson rookie card. Now, there might be others, but at this time, this is the one I have. I'm really happy to have the 1999 Bowman's Best Atomic Refractor rookie card because I really like the design of 1999 Bowman's Best, and having it Atomic Refractor is just really kind of an interesting presentation um, because it sort of has kind of like a like a... Its design has this like ripple effect look to it, and so when I hadn't seen it up, when I when I knew that atomic refractors existed, but I hadn't seen one, I was like, how could this possibly be presented as an atomic refractor? So when I finally came across any atomic refractor, um, I was kind of shocked by uh, the appearance. It's very beautiful, uh, very interesting diamond shape in the background, um, and the the font for the nameplate. You've got a cursive, and then you've got a print, which is really uh, I think stylistically very tasteful. Um, and then you've got the Bowman, Bowman's Best and the Rookie Card logo on the top left there, which really pops out of the card. Now, Nick Johnson wasn't 
he didn't go on to 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 uh, you know procure a very successful career, uh, but he was one of those guys that was you know um, uh, prospected heavily in '99, and so it's a good talking point, if nothing more, uh, to see a guy like this. Now he actually is featured featured on a card, uh, a mirror image card from Bowman's Vest with Frank Thomas on the other side. So I thought that was kind of cool that they were comparing him with the Big Hurt uh, at the time. Um, of course, Big, Big Hurt went on to do great things, and he's now in the Hall of Fame. Nick Johnson, unfortunately not. Uh, but I certainly wanted to grab something, and this card caught my eye. And, you know, this was purchased, I would say, in the last three, three years. And it was acquired at relatively inexpensively. I mean, this is, it's well past his, his, his hobby buzz, hobby prime. Um, and so I was able to acquire this for very minimal investment and um pleased to have it even if it's not a, he's not going to be a hall of famer i just really like i really like this representation it's a great addition to my collection i i really like this card because um it's a it's a bowman's best and i would say i i would my feeling is from the 90s we're talking the 90s era is one of the most underrated brands of cards is, is bowman's best so much attention is paid to bowman chrome but when you get Bowman's Best, and then especially Atomic Refractor. Those cards are just amazing, I think. Uh, just there at the end of the 90s. I just think those cards are really beautiful to, to, to look at. This is a, you know, a, a nice card in high grade. It's just, uh, I can appreciate the, the, the technology, the innovation there in Bowman's Best. And I think sometimes, you know, once again, I, I just, uh, I think the this is another brand that is sometimes maybe undervalued because... You know, Bowman Chrome is sort of, uh, you know, it, it's it's got more, uh, what's the right word, like in, impact in the hobby. You know, that's where people tend to go first when they're, they're thinking about, you know, great rookie cards or just, um, you know, high-end cards from, from from the 90s. And Bowman's best, best sometimes gets lost in the shuffle a little bit. And it's a shame because, uh, once again, I think, I think Atomic Refractors on Bowman's Best they're just really, they're really, they have a lot of eye appeal, and I, I can really appreciate that. Yeah, you know, you know, to your point, they, they're sort of uh, overshadowed by Bowman Chrome. Bowman Chrome holds the marquee value in the Bowman arm, right? Yeah. Um, and that's where people go when they want to get the players' rookie cards. Uh, and that's fine. I mean, in the '90s, the Bowman's best arm, I think, was right up there with Bowman Chrome, and it wasn't until later that it's become like less popular. In the current market, obviously, Chrome is just massively overpowers popularity and um, over other like Bowman, uh, Bowman Platinum and Bowman's Best and these other Bowman extensions. Uh, but whatever the case is that there are options and you can kind of pick and choose and that's, you know, that's a luxury. Now, you know, psychologically speaking, too many options can um, actually hinder uh, hinder choice, right? It's just it's debilitating to have too many options. And back in the '90s, we had a, we had Bowman's, we had Bowman, Bowman's Best, Bowman Chrome, right? Those were the three. And so you had some options, but there weren't too many of them. Now we have, I think, maybe a somewhat uh, paralyzing number of options. Uh, you know. <laughs> Paralysis from analysis is what, what they call it. So, like, you, you overthink too much, then you can't move forward on it. Too many choices, yeah. debilitating. Like, like three choices is fine. 30 choices, dude, get me out of here. I don't want to deal with this. Like, that's kind of how it feels, you know. And so I like the 90s era in a lot of ways because of that. There are a lot of choices from the, the, the horizontal arm of it, different brands. But vertically speaking, there might be two or three different things from one company which keeps it manageable. Whereas currently, presently, where we are is we have a whole expansion horizontally and a whole expansion vertically, and it just becomes like, kind of, you get, you get your interest gets lost in there. You know, you, you, you kind of lose it a little bit. So going back to the 99 Bowman's Best Atomic, we had the base, the refractor, and the atomic refractor. Now the atomics were numbered to 100, the refractors are numbered to 400, and the base obviously not numbered at all. So. I actually really like this card. I think it's really beautiful with that almost like iridescent purple blue thing happening. Really good looking stuff. 
And I'm really pleased to have this in my collection for the price that it was. Like I said, it was really a bargain. Now, had I bought this, you know, in 99 at as, a, as a PSA 10, it would have cost an arm and a leg, you know. But um, obviously I wasn't buying in 99 because I was out of the hobby, so it took years and many years later to where I, you know, took an interest in this particular card. So there you have it. This is the 1999 Bowman's Best Atomic Refractor Nick Johnson rookie card in a PSA 10. It's a sharp looking Nick Johnson card. I really think that's it's it's cool. It's really it's really neat. I, I also wasn't collecting in ninety nine, so you know, there's a couple of years there, uh, late in the late nineties where once again I'm still still playing a little bit of catch up to know exactly what products came out and I'm familiar with ninety nine Bowman's best, but you know, I don't see them all the time or I haven't, so it's just it's cool to see different examples and so I, I think that's just a you know, a, a quality card right there. Thanks. Cool. Awesome. So that covers it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed the uh, 93 Bowman Mariano Rivera and the 1999 Bowman's Best Atomic Refractor Nick Johnson rookie card. Thank you for tuning in to Radicards.com. I'm your host, Patrick Reno. Thank you, Brian Hayes, for joining us in this episode. And until next time, enjoy collecting. If you like this content, please subscribe. Thank you. Enjoy collecting.